If you design a system based around what the consumption in the home is on average, it doesn't matter as much when you use your power. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show. I've come to a beautiful sunny corner of Queensland today to find out a little bit more about domestic solar in Australia. But also this affects the whole globe. It's not just an Australian specific thing, but the penetration of solar in Australia is remarkable. There's an enormous amount of houses here. Roughly a third of all households have solar on the roof. That makes a really big impact. And we're now looking at the next step and that's represented by that. And look at that beautiful, neat installation. I want to tell you there's a reason behind that that we're going to find out about. But this roof of this building has a lot of solar on it, and I want to find out a little bit more. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. I always remember landing in Sydney and see, I, what I remember is red roofs and swimming pools as you come into Sydney. And then the, the most recent time I flew, it, flew in there a few years ago, what I noticed was black roofs because it was all solar panels and swimming pools. I mean, so much more solar installed in Australia than would, would have been in the UK at the time. The company that I represent, REA Solar, we're doing um, residential systems pretty much four times a day uh, at right, the moment. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's a very big uptake. Um, there's been a lot of innovation and technology over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. And there's starting to be a shift in the way of designs of solar systems as well for homeowners because, um, as you know, people are starting to move to things like EVs and yeah. battery storage and even further down the track on how these systems can actually interact with the, uh, with the grid providers. Right. Because that's what's the, the, uh, one of the things I noticed about, about the, the system you've got here. I don't know if that's what's on this house, is the inverted. I, I just think of an inverter as the big box you have in the garage or in the, in the cupboard somewhere. Yeah. But you've got inverters with the panels on the roof. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that is correct. So the difference of this system is that every panel essentially is its own solar system. So each right. panel has its own inverter. Um, and there's a lot of different advantages to, to this technology. This house is uh, one of my customers' right. houses um, who we've done an install for about four years ago. And we've done an add-on just recently. Oh. Um, and they're also my parents. Oh, um, so yeah, There is a connection. Yeah, there, there is a connection, yes. <laughs> Enphase is a unique technology and that it sits in a, a group of products called microinverters. So a little uh, conversion device sitting on every single panel. Right. Um, and that just gives you a lot more uh, information on what's going on with the system. You can understand behaviour of every panel. You can map and see how any shading might occur during the day. And most importantly, because you're effectively installing lots of little systems, expanding is quite easy because you just put right. a bunch more little systems on top of that. When you look at how ubiquitous solar has become uh, in Australia uh, over the years. You're now looking at, you know, over a third of houses in Australia have got right. solar on them. Yeah. Um, you know, that's now getting close to three million systems are actually out there right. on houses. Um, and now they're, of course, going to start getting bigger because yeah. all a lot of those earlier systems were quite small. They were based around rebate programs and other things. Uh, now what's happened is when people want to have an electric vehicle, yeah. they want to electric, uh, you know, hot water, heat pump hot water, they want to electrify their home, yeah. you can't get by with a three or four kilowatt system. No. You need eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah. Uh, and so now we're talking expansion. Yeah. Right. Because it must have had an effect on the, the, well, I know it has had an effect on the energy system because if you think three million, even if it's three million four kilowatt installs, I can't do the math, but if you add all that up, that's a, that's a couple of big power stations, basically. So that's what you're taking out of the demand system, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's the largest generation source um, in, uh, in Australia in terms, of, uh, in terms of output now. Oh, is it? What? Rooftop, domestic yeah, rooftop, rooftop solar, solar is, is the biggest mode. kind of category of, of wow. generation. So uh, it's quite interesting to see from a um, political point of view and how that transition is happening and what we're seeing is as solar gets bigger and bigger and as you know companies like REA are getting out there and installing more and more systems um, there is an impact on the grid the uh, regulators and other people are having to think through what this does right yeah um, and what they how they need to proactively engage and they're used to 
they're used to regulating power stations, right? Mm. Which, yeah. you know, you have years and years and years to think about it. Yeah. Here, we're switching on a new power station like every, every six every months. Every 10 minutes, well, yeah. according to you, every yeah. Yeah, four a day, you know, yeah. if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the whole system has to adapt itself yeah. to that speed. But then, I mean, presumably once people start putting batteries as well, I know from experience of having that in my house in the UK where, you know, there's, there's no arguing. I always argue there's plenty of solar in the UK. You shouldn't worry about it. Solar does work and it does. But when you're here, <laughs> you go, OK, it works better. Yes. I'll admit that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. In the, I guess, to go back and sort of look at the design aspect. So this is one of the things I love about the Enphase product is that you've got the scalability, but at yeah. the same time frame, it gives you the flexibility from a design perspective. So everything in my designs are always based around kilowatt hours, which is a metric of energy, compared to a kilowatt rated size, which is just an instantaneous measure of power. Yeah. And there's usually a lot of confusion around these metrics to get thrown out in the marketplace. So kilowatt hours is the most important because that's what a homeowner um, is consuming. That's what they're buying from their retailer. And that's ultimately what a solar system is going to produce. So when I first sat down and sort of explained this to, to my old man, and as we all know as sons, getting our dads to do things can be very difficult at times. <laughs> uh, but the things that we looked at was basically what they were doing in consumption habits. And at the time, they were sitting around about... 26 kilowatt hours a day is average average consumption habits. So we've added now another eight panels. The panels are now a 465 watt panel that we got up there for the extra eight. Um, and we added a Tesla Powerwall 2 that has 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage. So this system now would be averaging somewhere around about the mid 40 kilowatt hours a day um, with 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage, which also gives them grid backup if there's a failure. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think the uh, interesting thing when we talk about uh, customers and how they use energy is what time of the day they're using it. Yeah. And I yep. think, you know, self-funded retirees are, are fantastic candidates for, for solar because they're at home yeah. a lot of the time when the sun's out and it's generating energy. So that's when they're using it. Um, and, you know, I think in markets like Australia and increasingly around the world, feed-in tariffs are a thing of the past. When you export to the grid, you get either nothing or a pittance. Yeah. So you want to use every bit of solar you yeah. generate. So you either want to put in a battery, you want to pre-cool your house, you want to do something to make sure that you adapt. And I, I kind of like the idea of, of people adapting their, their, their patterns to when the sun's available. You know, it almost sort of harks you back to a an older time when, you know, it's like, oh, it's a good day to put the washing out, yeah. you know, yeah. versus yeah. sitting in your apartment and putting it in the dryer, you yeah. know. Um, they're not big modifications, and if they can enable you to live more efficiently and more carbon-free, then why not, right? Yeah. So if we have a home like, you know, mum and dad originally, say, rounded up 30 kilowatt hours a day, and they're you know, retired, and they can get, you know, 20 kilowatt hours to 25 kilowatt hours, that may happen throughout the day, for example, compared to, you know, someone in my situation, I'm about to turn 40, I've got three kids, you know, I'm always at work, um, you know, my consumption habits, if they were 30, might be that I'm doing 15 through the day. Right. Does that then constitute that I should get a smaller system or should we look at, well, what is it that I'm using and develop a relationship in around that? So that's what I try to create for customers is that it doesn't matter what the price point of power is. It doesn't matter what the price point of export is. What matters is how many kilowatt hours are you consuming now? If you're consuming 30, you need a system that's gonna produce 30 to 35. If you want to prepare for the future when you're adding an electric vehicle, you know, we might, you know, design in around that. So there's, there's always an answer towards this notion of when we're using power and at the price point that we're at, yeah. we're not the cheapest up front, all right? But there is something going on behind the scenes and what's actually going on is, is that the end phase product coupled with REA creates efficiencies. So when you have more efficiencies in your product, you don't need the 13, 14 panels to do the same thing as the five kilowatt output, you need like eight to nine. So the actual overall cost point for the system to get the kilowatt hours is actually pretty relative. Yeah. And then when you sit down with homeowners, the things that I've noticed is that subconsciously homeowners have already worked out about a five year payback period, right. whether they know it or not. Right. So for example, if someone's spending you know, $3,000 a year on electricity, they probably got somewhere around about like an eight to $10,000 budget. If they're spending $1,000 on electricity, they're not going to be looking at a six kilowatt system for seven grand, they're looking at one for three, four. 
but we can always provide a solution for where they're at in their consumption by the flexibility of the product that actually ends up relating to their kilowatt hours. Well, that's all we've got time for. It's been an amazing experience to hear about this stuff, how, how much is going on in Australia at the moment. It is really exciting to see, but I'm not gonna go on and on a lot now because the temperature outside this house is currently about 37 degrees. So it's not a nice place to stand for a long time. My tan has slightly increased even in the time I've been here. Please do subscribe to the Fully Charged Show. Please tell your friends to subscribe to the Fully Charged Show. Have a look at the Patreon link. All the notes and the links about the companies I've been talking to today are in the show notes beneath this video. But that's it. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Quick shade!